purified manner. Okay, without wasting our time, we are going to start our chapter that is chemical reactions and equations. In production of this chapter, we know change in nature can be classified into either physical or chemical. So first, we will understand what is exactly physical. Physical change. Physical changes are temporary in nature. The material undergoes change in its shape and size, but does not undergo any change in its nature. That is all about the physical change. Now the next topic is chemical change. Chemical changes are permanent in nature. The substance present before the change does not exist by the end of the change and new substance is formed. That is all about the chemical change and physical change. That is the basic difference also we are seeing here. What is the difference between physical change and chemical change? Physical change are temporary in nature but chemical changes are permanent in nature. Now we will discuss certain situations regarding physical change and chemical change. Let me give you a few situations and you need to tell me if changes that occur is physical or chemical. The first situation in front of you, this one is a paper is burned or something is going to burn. What is that? It is a chemical change. Why? Whenever we are going to burn a paper, that paper is converted into ash. You know that is the best example and the most common example of chemical change. That is whenever we are burning a paper or something when we are burning it, that means it is converting into ash. That means a new product is forming and that is exactly a chemical change. The next situation in front of you, that is this glaciers or ice. What is happening here? Day by day it is melting or our ice is converting into water. Ice is also converting into water. Now the question arises, what is the type of change? We have to answer it. Okay, the so next situation. That is respiration. The next situation you want to is respiration. And what is happening in respiration? We are intaking the oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. Something is happening in our body. A respiration process is happening in our body. In respiration process, oxygen we are intaking and certain process is happening in our cell and it's converting into a carbon dioxide and energy. So that is all about respiration. In respiration also chemical change is possible or chemical change is occurring. The last situation I am giving you, whenever a paper is torn, what happens? The shape of that paper is changing, the paper's size is also changing, that means that is a physical change. So in these examples, it is very clear what is physical change and what is chemical change. We are, able to, we are able to understand the situations regarding physical change and chemical change. Next topic is chemical reactions and their characteristics. Now we, we are going to discuss about what is the exact definition of chemical reaction. Okay, this is a whole concept map regarding the chemical reactions and their characteristics. First we will deal with that definition part. What is exactly, what is exactly happening? What is exactly chemical reaction? Chemical reaction is a process in which reactants combine to form products. What is chemical reaction? I repeat, chemical reaction is a process in which reactants combine to form products. Okay, that is the basic definition of chemical reactions. Now we are dealing with the certain characteristics of chemical reaction one by one. There are certain characteristics of chemical reaction. The first one is change in color, change in state of matter, evolution of gas and the last one evolution of precipitate. These are the characteristics of chemical reaction. Now one by one we will see what is happening in change in color and what is happening in change in state of matter and what is happening in evolution of gases and what is happening in evolution of precipitate. One by one we will see the reactions happening in these characteristics. The first thing is change in color. Change in color, what is happening? We are taking an example. When hydrated copper sulfate is heated, when hydrated copper sulfate is heated, it turns blue color into white color. Initially, the copper sulfate is in blue color, that you all know that. When it is heated, it will convert into white color. 
that is our first characteristic change in color it is clearly demonstrated with the help of this reaction okay now we are moving towards the second characteristic what is happening change in state of matter second one is change in state of matter in this reaction in this character six a reaction will be the reaction of barium chloride reaction of barium chloride with the sodium sulfate what is happening what we are observing precipitate as sodium vapor barium sulfate is producing or we can observe the precipitate as solid barium sulfate this is the second characteristic change in state of matter the third one that is evolution of gases the third one is evolution of gases this also having a reaction when zinc granule react with concentrated h2so4 when zinc granule react with concentrated h2so4 it will produce or you emit hydrogen gas it will produce or it will emit hydrogen gas that is the evolution of gas okay so it is also a chemical reaction then last one the formation of or evolution of precipitate evolution of precipitate what is happening here evolution of precipitate means evolution of precipitate magnesium ribbon magnesium ribbon is burned in air it will produce white magnesium oxide okay that means evolution of precipitate is happening in this case so we can easily identify this is also a chemical reaction
So now the metal is balanced. We'll put mark here. Okay. Now next moving to the second thing, your second part that is non-metal. Is there any non-metal available here? No sir. There's no my non-metals. So that means no issue. Cancel out. Then moving to the next one. What is that? Oxygen. Where is oxygen? Yes. LHS is also that is certain oxygen. LHS is also oxygen is present. That means you have to balance that oxygen now. Number of oxygen in LHS is only one, and here the oxygen number is four. So to balance that, we need to multiply with. We need to multiply with four here. Okay. Okay, so let's begin to multiply with four. That means four into one oxygen. That means now here the number of oxygen is four, and here also number of oxygen is four. That means that whole content is balanced. Four oxygen here as well as four oxygen in the RHS part. So our oxygen is also balanced. Now once again we'll check from the first part. Metal three metal three aluminium is here also, and here also three. Next one non-metal not available here. No issue. Next one oxygen. LHS four and here also four. No issue. Now we are moving towards the hydrogen part. Hydrogen. Observe it once again. Observe that hydrogen. LHS the hydrogen the number of hydrogen is eight. Four into two. That is eight hydrogen is available here in the LHS part. Now just observe in the RHS part how many hydrogens are there? Only two. How many hydrogens are there? Only two hydrogens are in the RHS part. So we need to balance it. Eight is here. Here only two. So that means we need to multiply with four. That means now here the number of hydrogen is eight, and here also eight. So in this manner, the equation is balanced. Or once again, we will check from the beginning whether the metal is balanced. Three iron, three iron here also. The non-metal is not available. Now next oxygen four and here also four. Then hydrogen LHS also eight and here also eight. In this manner we have to balance certain unbalanced chemical equations. For each and every unbalanced equations you need to follow this for certain patterns for balancing the equation. So that is all about how to balance the chemical equation.